Okay, so back in the rock file, um, I'm going to select my rock, get into sculpt mode here, and I'll just use the standard brush, uh, st sculpt draw brush uh, as a starting point. I'm going to click this little button here, add brush, and that'll create sort of a clone of this brush, and I'll rename it to um, alpha stamp brush. And this is the brush I'm going to be using for the cracks to apply uh, the crack alpha to the brush. You just need to go to texture here and click new. And then uh, just under your texture tab here, just open up uh, the alpha. And I'll go with uh, this, this simple alpha here, or maybe this one, uh, rock crack alpha one. And so to get this to work, you need to set your mapping to area plane or view plane. Uh, I believe either of them is fine. Uh, and then you, for under stroke, you need to set this to uh, uh, anchored. So what this will then do is it'll sort of pull the, the alpha out like this. But you'll notice um, there's a problem here. It's creating a bulge where it shouldn't. So to fix that, uh, you just need to go over here to sample bias and just grab this uh, and pull it all the way down to minus one meter. And there you go. So now you've got sort of a, a crack alpha. But uh, so let's say you want to sort of drag in this here. Uh, you'll see the detail isn't really good enough. So I'm just going to subdivide this mesh once and then apply the subdivision. So add modifier subdivision surface. And it took a few seconds, but then I just click apply. So now I've got essentially double the resolution. And again, you don't need to worry about polygon density. Um, now that I've got a very, very dense mesh, uh, I should have no trouble actually adding in smaller details. And um, again, you can mask out certain areas and just, like let's say I want a, a crack and I'll just smooth the mask here and invert it. And so I'll just sort of try and find a nice orientation here, something like that. And you can always um, uh, complement it with some, some extra little cracks, like a really tiny, with a really tiny um, draw sharp brush just to give it a little bit of extra, make it make it feel like it fits in there, if you know what I mean. And so that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, um, and remember I, I've got my alpha stamp brush. If you wanna access the brush that you made, the custom brush, it, you just need to click on the, let's say I'm on like the grab brush and I wanna get back to my custom brush. Um, I just need to go to the the actual draw brush, the one that was uh, that it was cloned from, and then just click on it, and it, it'll show it up. It'll show up here. So uh, that's kind of weird. I don't know why it works that way, but it does. So I have to sort of deal with it. Okay, so this crack, um, I'll use it here and there, and try and find ways to use it. But obviously, I'm going to need uh, many different types of crack alphas to uh, to get this to work. Uh, also the strength, um, it is a bit, strength of this is a bit high, so I'll just get in here and create some, create some breakup. And with my scrape brush, I can uh, erase certain areas of, of the of the cracks if I want to. So and uh, time to try I think another brush, uh, another alpha. So I'll just go to my texture here and uh, make sure it's set to brush so that I'm changing the brush texture here. And I'll just open up say this one over here, um, alpha two. And once I have that, it's a bit weak. So I'll, 
I'll bring up the strength a bit. Shift F, just bring that up. And so you get the idea and I'm just going to I'm just going to keep going with this and try and try and get some nice small cracks in here so So the thing about uh, using cracks is you have to kind of use them really sparingly uh, on a rock like this um it's again the thing about uh, having a balance between details and open space. And also just the kind of rock it is. It's like this very, I think this could be stand, sandstone, but uh, I'm not sure. But yeah, like the cracks are really only in certain areas and very much restricted to sort of um, like corners and like you, you, won't, you don't see many cracks that go over a, like an open uh, surface um, although there are a couple but yeah you gotta just uh, use them kind of sparingly or like put them in places where they are obvious but not everywhere and so I'm using a combination of the alphas I made um, and uh, the sharp uh, draw sharp brush to kind of complement that yeah so not much to say um, besides like sort of constantly gauging where I'm putting my my cracks where I'm putting the details um, constantly thinking about is this too much is this too little uh, is it obvious enough here or do I need to blend it in better stuff like that And you can obviously, you can use one alpha for quite a lot. And as you can see I'm doing here, you can just sort of uh, erase out the cracks that you don't want or you don't need. And also uh, varying the strength of the cracks is also important so that they're not all the same strength and that'll end up looking kind of fake I guess so okay so now I'm going to do the second um, kind of detailing which is just going to be sort of like uh, edge breakup and edge chipping uh, effect and for this I'm going to use um, the scrape brush again but just with a, like a square alpha on it so I've got my uh, scrape brush enabled here and I'm just going to go down to texture here and click new and just uh, open the square uh, alpha which is this one and um, right so for the brush settings texture settings I'm going to set this to area plane and then set the stroke method yeah space is fine I'm setting my spacing all the way down to 1% and I'm gonna also enable random which kind of makes the the alpha sort of have a random rotation as I drag it and then um, I believe 360 is fine I'll come back to that uh, in a moment hardness I'm bringing it down all the way to about 0.2 and then uh, strength can be to 1 um, I can't remember if there's anything else. Let me let me see how this reacts. Right, so it's it's giving me a really nice hard sort of chipping edge effect, which is kind of what I want. So that's looking kind of good so far. And one thing to know about this particular brush setting 
is um, just you have to use really small short strokes like long strokes really aren't gonna like in most cases they're not gonna work that well so um, you could also play with a brush setting uh, strength setting if you think it's a bit too strong you can always bring it back a bit but, but yeah so now with this um, I'm going to go over basically the whole rock and just um, give it some of that randomness especially on the edges which you see uh, in, in real life. So, so just using, uh, again, really, really s short, tiny strokes, not much. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really thinking at this point, n not much. I'm just trying to put damage on like every edge that I see. Uh, just a light amount, not much, and then I'd have like heavier chipping in certain small areas. And this is again a, a variation of what I did uh, at the beginning, wh where I like tried to make every edge seem like it had a bit of breakup. Again, just to try and get get rid of that CG feel. Of course, the rock itself still has, like, it doesn't have texture, doesn't have the right color, so it's difficult to gauge, like, what would be realistic. But I think a whole ton of imperfections is better. So really just going over the entire model now and trying to get every edge a little bit of that um, that chipping and break up. I'm also doing these uh, right there I just used a layer brush to sort of create a little uh, dent downwards on the rock and then use the scrape brush to expand that to make it look like a piece of rock uh, broke off there. And this is, I'd say this is pretty close to to done at this point. Just need to, I just need to go over every single bit of the rock as far as I can, just to try and uh, get a little bit of detail in there everywhere. All right, and I think that's pretty much done um, in terms of uh, wear and tear, chipping, uh, cracks, that sort of stuff. And so from here, you would be able to go decimate this, uh, UV unwrap it, um, you know, retopology, that kind of thing, and then take it to your texturing app to add your high frequency details and uh, all of that stuff. So this is typically where I would sort of go from high poly to low poly, you know, baking and all of that.